Okay, now I've got all of the parts ready to build a rear add-on night vision unit. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to test the, uh, the camera and the monitor and the battery, make sure that they are working uh, before I start um, cutting and soldering any connections. So I've got a power splitter here. So one power splitter at one end goes to the camera and the other end goes to the monitor. The lead is plugged into the back of the camera. It only goes in the one way and at this stage it's worth noting the arrangement of the wires uh, red, black and then yellow because that will be important later on. Now the camera comes with a little tiny grub screw which locks the lens and it's best to remove that, take it out, put it out of the way, it's very tight so don't lose it and then just free off the uh, lens by twisting it slightly in case there's a burr on it that allows you to focus it. So we now connect together the uh, video out from the camera to the video in on the monitor. Um, generally speaking there's going to be two monitor uh, video supplies um, yellow and white. The, the normal one to use would be the yellow one which shows up as AV1 but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so now we've got power and video connections on both and we can connect to the, uh, the battery. Plug in the battery and the uh, monitor has come on. Point the camera down the shop there and uh, I can see that there's a there's a reasonable uh, sharp image of the door at the end of the workshop so, and that's about uh, eight or nine feet away I suppose so that should be pretty well close enough for use later on and be adjusted if necessary so all the components are working so good to go now all of these parts are going to be assembled into this project box and to uh, put it all together uh, need a few bits and pieces. We've got the battery there and I'm going to join all the connections together using a small piece of this uh, uh, copper faced board. The, um, the board itself has got a, a series of holes in it and in one direction the holes are all joined together by a copper strip so this can easily be used as a, a form of the connector, junction connector. Now to make the build work we're going to need a few other bits and pieces. A power end socket for charging the battery uh, will also produce um, external power if you want to plug in another battery pack or it, it can even be used to draw power off uh, if you wanted to run something else. So that's an important part. Um, an on off switch. Uh, I like to use a rocker switch, it's a bit more positive. A video out socket so that uh, if required it can be used uh, with a, an external recorder. On this particular one I'm going to add in uh, a little voltmeter so that you can check the condition of the battery um, without actually having to take it out and put a meter on it. Uh, a few other things. Uh, we're going to use a, one of these mounts cut down and uh, I have one here which has been uh, fixed onto part of a, a weaver scope base. Um, this part will be fixed to the back of the project box and will mean that the whole thing can be uh, aligned to suit your uh, style of shooting. And to join it all together I'm going to be using um, in this case a uh, little uh, jack plug and, and socket. This is a four-way one. You only actually need a three-way one 
but uh, it doesn't really make any difference. And um, last but not least, to, to save cutting the, uh, the, the cable that comes with the camera, uh, I've got some uh, little uh, uh, plugs which fit it ready wired up um, and that will go into the camera. Um, to go with it um, I should be using a variety of different um, cables and a selection of heat shrink different sizes to fix everything together make it um, electrically safe. Uh, these cables, especially the ones that come with the monitors and the cameras, are very very fine and so to to strip the wires off I use a, a, a little uh, wire stripper which is a, adjustable for wire thickness and it does mean that uh, I can be certain that I can strip the insulation off and not uh, damage any of the cores and uh, of course to, just to check and make sure that everything is uh, is correct a multimeter is, is pretty well essential for this sort of work and of course uh, a decent soldering iron and solder uh, my preference is for the original leaded solder uh, as it seems to uh, seems to just work better may not be uh, um, everybody's choice but um, it does uh, does work better for me. Uh, to fit the uh, camera onto the scope uh, we'll be using some of the uh, flow palast um, connectors, uh, an end cap and which will hold the, the camera itself and one of their uh, inline straight connectors uh, which takes the end cap and fits over the scope as well. Okay, on this build I should be setting the uh, monitor into the lid of the project box. So I've got to cut a rectangular hole in it to allow the, the monitor to sit in there and with this box it's going to be nearly the whole size of the, of the lid. So to make it uh, easier to uh, to mark it out I'm going to just uh, put on uh, some masking tape and now I can uh, I can draw on that uh, to give my cutting lines and then uh, that will uh, give me a fairly accurate uh, mark to cut to right now I've marked out for the uh, monitor to go into the lid um, and uh, I'll cut out the, uh, out the hole with a, with a dremel and a little cutting room. Now one of the things that uh, does concern a lot of people when they start thinking about this is, is how they're going to wire it up. And uh, looking here at the, uh, at the monitor to start with, we can see we've got three, uh, three, three connectors coming out of the back of it the yellow one and the white one in this instance have BNC type uh, plugs on them they are both video the red one has uh, a typical PAL um, socket the 12 volt supply but of course the worry is that when you cut this you don't know which wire is which so when this is fitted onto the project box or into the project box uh, we're not going to need a, a huge length of cable so I'm going to cut this about uh, about here and uh, that leaves me ample cable to make all the connections and what I'll do here is I'll just uh, expose the, uh, the inner um, cores to, to this cable and, and see what there is. Okay, and we can see that although there's the three 
plugs on it, each with uh, two connections, we've only got a total of four uh, wires in, in the cable. Uh, and that is uh, because that uh, all of them actually share uh, the common earth. Now, it would be ideal if uh, every unit that, uh, that you bought from whichever supplier had the same colour coded uh, cables, but they don't. And so you do need to check. So in this case we'll start off with black, which should be earth. And that um, is showing that there is a common earth connection from the black to each of the three plugs on there. So move that one out of the way and then the red one would normally be power. So we'll just uh, try it onto the, the centre socket of the power connector and there's continuity. So that's fine. There is now uh, two left and they are going to be the video. So white does actually go to white and that should leave us with uh, yellow, uh, hopefully going to yellow, and it does. So in this case, um, all of the uh, all of the colours are correct to the uh, to the plugs which are fitted to the unit. So when we come to wire it up, that will be a, a straightforward operation to do. Now on the um, on the camera, it's not quite so easy to get at the uh, to get at all of the uh, connectors. Um, once again, here we've got red, we've got black, and we've got yellow. And the red is the closest to the edge of the uh, um, of the box. Now, going on to that red one, it should be the centre of the power socket. Okay, now I can't um, uh, make contact with it actually plugged into the camera, so I removed it from the uh, from the socket, and I'm going to try and uh, see if I can test the continuity from the plug like this. Yep. So the red one goes to the centre pin on the power black one is the center that should go to the outer on the video ground on the video and the ground on the power and it does and the last one the yellow it should go to the center pin and it does so uh, once again the the connections on here the colours do correspond to what you would normally expect to find. And I'll just put that back in there for the time being. Um, I'm going to uh, need to to know that because rather than cutting down that cable and drawing it, I'm going to use uh, um, a replacement uh, a socket or a replacement plug with short lengths of cable attached to it. Now the, uh, the box has uh, had all of the holes um, cut in it for the switches and uh, so forth and the part of the mount has been fixed to it firmly. Uh, it's now time to start um, fitting in the switches and, and getting ready to do all of the electrical work. So now I'm going to put all the switches in with wires on them uh, ready to connect up to my little um, piece of printed circuit board to connect it all together. All the sockets and switches are now in place, they're wired up and uh, ready to go. The battery pack is uh, fitted 
uh, that's held in place with some velcro and the uh, little um, that has on it uh, four strips uh, which have been tinned ready for soldering in the uh, all the different wires uh, all of the components have been wired up using the conventional colors so we've got black which is the ground yellow is for video and uh, red is for power so uh, they will all be uh, connected in, uh, together in the appropriate manner